The election of the Bishop of Rome was, in the very beginning, done by a vote of both the local members of the church and the priests and other lower leaders serving in the church as members. But that soon changed after the death of the apostles to just the bishops and priests. And after the year 1000 AD, the authority to select popes, the bishops of Rome, was taken over exclusively by men who were known as cardinals, another office created in the Roman church that never existed in the church as it has been organized by the Savior and the apostles. And of course, all of the popes were chosen exclusively from the cardinals. So they were, ex they were selecting one of their own to be the chief leader of the church. The Roman pontiffs seemed to place a great deal of effort on getting worldly wealth and property to go with their hoped-for spiritual authority, which really didn't seem to be too important to a lot of them. And after a thousand AD, the Pope started telling European kings and princes how to rule over their countries. At this point in history, the Roman bishops started calling themselves Pope, a word that means Papa or Father, and was meant to give the impression that the Pope was really the Father to all the world. The worldly power of the popes grew rapidly, and soon they had huge amounts of land and building in many towns and cities throughout the Roman world. And in the year 744, Charlemagne, who was a very powerful king, an emperor, the Holy Roman Emperor, he was called, the king who conquered what is now virtually all of Europe, from France all the way through to the Elbe River, which is halfway through Poland, and all the way down to um, Italy. Uh, he wanted to confirm a large land donation that his father, who was entitled Pepin the Short, uh, had given to the church. And in addition to help the popes claim that ownership of this land, which there were other claimants for, by the way, and the worldly powers claim to that ownership and claim to the worldly power had started much earlier, the pope and Charlemagne came up with a, um, how shall we say, a document called the Donation of Constantine. Constantine was the emperor at the time, really of the formation of the Roman Catholic Church in the 300s. This forged document was given to Pope Sylvester I, who knew perfectly well that it was a total fabrication because it was at least partly his idea. This idea of this donation of Constantine document was to back up the claim of the church to land that it did not have a clear claim to. Using this forgery, later popes also claimed ownership over the city of Naples and the islands of Sicily and Sardinia. In 1859, the property owned by the popes in Italy was about 16,000 square miles. Population was believed to be about 3 million. And the taxes were so high, the people were in absolute disgust at being uh, ruled over by the popes. In 1870, the Italian army took control over all the land that the Catholic Church controlled in Italy, including the city of Rome. And finally, Italy became one unified country that wasn't divided into parts. It wasn't until 1929 when the last of the Papal States, which is known as Vatican City, which is the part of Rome that the uh, Pope really owns, we'll say, when that was guaranteed its independence by a treaty between the country of Italy and the Pope, the Pope finally recognized that the country of Italy had a right to exist, and did exist, and he agreed to that if Italy would accept that the Pope was the sole and independent head of Vatican City, and that the Roman Catholic Church uh, was the ruler. He, of course, being in charge, was the ruler of Vatican City. The document called the Donation of Constantine pretended to be a gift by Roman Emperor Constantine of all the land and gave the Pope independent worldly power 
to govern Italy and the and land that the church had in the western part of Europe. And all of that was given exclusively to the Roman pontiff, to the Roman pope. Its purpose was to strengthen the land claims the popes were trying to make in Italy by making those claims look like they had been much older than the claims of anybody else. And the principal reason that the donation of Constantine, which almost nobody has ever heard of, but the reason it is at all famous is due to the fact that a Latin scholar, a guy named Lorenzo Valla, in the middle 1400s demonstrated that the document was totally fake because the Latin that it was written in had only been used since the 700s. And so it could not have been written any earlier than 700, which was 400 years after Constantine had died. So obviously Constantine had not written it. The popes were very upset that their uh, forgery had been discovered, but there wasn't much they could do about it. Not content with their pretended superiority in all church affairs, the popes carried on their, and this is a quote from, I think it's Mosheim, carried on their insolent pretensions so far as to give themselves out as lords of the universe, arbiters of the fate of kingdoms and empires, and supreme rulers over the kings and princes of the earth. They claimed the right, popes did, to direct all the internal affairs of every nation, and to make it legal for citizens of countries to rebel against the rulers of those countries if the rulers were not obedient to the things the Pope said needed to be done. Now I have a question for you. Do you really believe that this ignorant, proud, wealth, and power-hungry church presided over by murderers, adulterers, and thieves is the same church and has the same spirituality and approval of God and the Savior as the church that was established by Jesus the Christ? I don't think so. Jesus declared to Pontius Pilate, My kingdom is not of this world. And on an earlier occasion, when the people would have proclaimed Jesus their king as a, with an earthly kingdom, he departed from them. He would have nothing to do with that. Yet the Roman Catholic Church that boasts to the whole world that it was started by Peter, the chief apostle of Jesus Christ. And Jesus refused to be a king on earth of any sort, type, or description. This church pretends it has power and authority over all the kings and rulers on the whole earth and would have the whole world believe it has the right to be the ultimate power over everything everywhere. In the time where the Pope was the only power over a large part of Europe, the Pope signed death warrants for many people. If you look under Wikipedia, and you'll see a, there is a, a page where it is a list of people who were executed by the Holy See. It makes it interesting reading to see who these Popes figured was worthwhile being killed. Now, most of the executions were related to the punishment for civil crimes, that is, laws that were broken in the papal estates, with the condemned people being convicted within the civil courts of the papal states. But a lot of them were people that the popes disagreed with. Now, to give you an idea of some of what happened, in 1585, Pope Sixtus V initiated a zero-tolerance crackdown on crime. How many times have we heard that? which, according to the stories, resulted in more, and of course in those days they chopped off people's heads for killing them, there were more severed heads collected at the Castel Sant'Angelo Bridge, which is the place where these executions were done, than there were, according to the stories, melons that could be found in the Roman markets. That, I mean, Roman markets had lots of melons. I mean, any if you were convicted of any crime, on the papal states, it was death. You know, maybe you were starving to death and you stole part of a loaf of bread, death. You know, they chop off their head, they don't have to feed you. 